Okay. Let's get ready to go here. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today's an episode that I don't want to have to make, but uh, I feel as a Ukrainian that it's my moral obligation to say something and to offer uh, some solidarity with the people who are fighting and dying f right at this exact moment on the other side of the planet. And uh, this is not the, a typical episode that I normally do. I usually avoid talking about politics in every way possible because I want what we do here together to be a place where we can uh, have some uh, respite from all of the troubles that we have, uh, whether it's, you know, stresses that everyone has in their regular lives or major political issues, um, war, like what's going on right now. But uh, this is something that means a lot to me personally, and I feel an obligation to say something. If this subject matter is upsetting or offensive to you, please do not watch. Uh, I know I've done a couple of episodes in the past. I, I remember we painted Francisco de Goya's Saturn devouring his sons. I thought that was pretty humorous for Father's Day as a father myself. And I know a number of people were very upset with that. That's an, it's an upsetting image, uh, even though it's a, a kind of fantastical abstract image. And I know some people stopped watching because of that. And, and so if this is upsetting to you, Please do not watch every episode beyond the two that I'm doing today. Uh, we will return to our normally scheduled program, and you can return here for content that is um, uh, that that tries as best as possible to offer an alternative to all of the horrible things that are going on in the world. Okay, I want to make that very clear at the outset. Um, So, the painting, the painting that I want to make today is this collage that I created over the past 24 hours of Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, who I consider to be the most evil person alive today. We're going to get into some of the issues surrounding everything that's happening today. And absolutely, there are things that have happened under our watch as Canadians, Americans, British people, Europeans. Every country has some horrible things that they've done. And I'm not excusing all of the various military interventions that... Uh, that have been done in my name, we can talk about that. I do, however, want to bring specific focus to what's happening today in the world because this person I consider to be unreservedly a, a despicable, evil human being who must be stopped. And I, and I want to make very clear that Putin does not represent probably most of Russian people. I, I love Russia. Most of my favorite artists are Russian. Some of my favorite uh, authors, Dostoevsky is probably my favorite, favorite author of all time. Uh, various different musicians, dancers, uh, the, the, the innovations that Russians have made in science and technology, mathematics are legendary, right? So what is, I think, the most deeply upsetting part about all of this is how uh, Putin has dragged his own people into this totally unnecessarily vile conflict. And what I want to do is just try to focus some of my anger in, in, that I have towards what's happening in the world and bring attention to this person who I, who, who I despise. Watching the news and watching some of the video clips, which you can find if you dig down into some of the 
deeper recesses of the web that I cannot unsee of of giving of promising uh, safe corridors to refugees to escape cities that are being shelled and bombed at this very moment and as soon as those people emerge from subway stations and basements to then bomb and murder them is despicable I think about if if you know when I see pictures of little old Ukrainian women and mothers carrying their children and people and and them being killed I think about my own family and I think about how disgusting that is and how vile and reprehensible that is and we can you can say that that's all the that's what happens in the fog of war innocent people die but this war did not need to happen and it must come to an end immediately and this person is responsible for all of this pain and sorrow in the world and in people who have the power to stop this must gather the courage to fight this horrible tyranny sorry um so today what i want to do is this is a painting that i'm 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 going to i'm going to make and then later on this afternoon i'm going to make a painting of Ukrainian President Zelensky, who I consider to be a hero to stand up in the face of certain death. And so I'm gonna start today's painting of, of Putin and then take a little bit of a break and then I'm gonna come back and I wanna talk about something much more positive because I think I just can only stand a certain amount of negativity in my life. Uh, Okay, so I want to, uh, this is the, the, the sort of the, sorry, this is very, uh, difficult. Um, so here's the process that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be, I, what I want to do is I want to show someone who does not know how to paint at all, how to do today's painting in as quickly as possible because I would like for this image to spread as far and wide as possible. So this is some of the steps that we're gonna take. This is what we do in the classes that I normally teach. So in about two hours from now, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison and you can judge for yourself how well it turned out and if this is something that you want to, um, to talk about. Typically, what I do is talk about ways that you could support the work that I'm doing. I do want to instead bring some attention to some charities, which I encourage you to donate and to support. I know not everyone's got money. Uh, there are other things that you can do. For instance, here's UNICEF's website. You can there's, These links are in the description below. You can donate to support the great work that UNICEF does to provide um, food, shelter, safety to children around the world. Here's uh, the Canada Ukraine Foundation, which is raising money for very similar causes for food and shelter to help refugees. Speaking of which, here is the UN Human Rights uh, uh, Council. They're uh, helping to facilitate the um, extra, uh, extradition, the, the safe exit of refugees from Ukraine into neighboring countries. Uh, here is the website for Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is essential in a time of need right now where people are, are being murdered and dying. These doctors go across borders and into conflict zones and help, including the Red Cross. If you donate to the Red Cross of Canada or the Red Cross of the United States, you can get, I think with all of these websites, charitable receipts if that's you, you get tax uh, donation. Um, if you donate to the Red Cross in Ukraine, you do not get a don you not don't get that tax receipt if that's important to you. But the the Red Cross is uh, um, you know allied, so they will transfer your money. 
Uh, there's a couple, I, th I think I put these links in the description just if you want to see. There's lots of other lists of different places that you can find information. Here's if you're in the United States, you can look at NPR. They have a whole list of other, many of which I've already provided here. And as well here in Canada, there is other websites. Again, I hear people booking um, stays in, in Airbnbs in, in Kiev and... Uh, various other cities within Ukraine. Okay. So today, what I want to do to, to get this painting started, you could sketch this whole thing out, but it's a fairly complex image. And it's kind of important to me that we know who it is that we're, we're actually painting. So what we're going to do is the image transfer to get started. I want to show you that there is a link in the description below, and it's a different Dropbox than we normally use. We don't haven't used this one in a little while because this is kind of a separate uh, series of, of, of classes that we do and, and kind of focusing on things that are happening in the news. And if we click down here, number 20, I've called this painting the Sad Satan Painting. You'll see three files in this folder, which you can download. Those three files correspond to the original image, and then the outline, which I've completed, which is free, you can download. Please spread it far and wide. Let everybody know um, about this. So how do we get that image out? I've printed mine out for my inkjet printer here at home. You can use your laser jet printer, any printer you like. And I'm gonna play this video, just sort of showing how, oops, this process works. So. You know, t I think this video, I did two outlines, this and the Zelensky outline in nine minutes. So it doesn't take that long. I'm not gonna play through the whole thing, but first I just wanna tape this onto the canvas. I kind of moved it a little bit further down from the top just so there was maybe a little bit more space for those horns. If you wanted to make those horns even bigger, you can move the, the outline even further down on your canvas. And then I'm using some carbon paper here to facilitate the transfer process. And I make sure you, the shiny side is down because that's what contains the carbon or graphite. And then I'm just gonna go over these lines. And I did most of the lines, I didn't do all the lines in the hair or the eyebrows because those, you know, we're gonna paint over everything. I also didn't do all of the lines in the, the fire as well because That's what it looks like. Just make sure you double check that you've got all of your, um, before you take the tape off, that all the lines are there. Sometimes I've done this and I've I've missed the <laughs> one of the eyes or something. So this is helpful to kind of keep that, uh, keep aware of that. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do is, uh, I want to talk about getting the painting started. We've got an image on the canvas, so I'm gonna do typically what I normally do just to keep things kind of consistent. The first step that I'm gonna do is apply some color on the canvas. And I wanna make it kind of clear how the colors that I'm using, because you'll hear me talk about using a warm red or a cool blue, etc. These are the paints that I'm using. I'm not sponsored or paid by anybody to do any of this. Um, so this is the brand I use. It's nice. It's it's fairly accessible, easy to find, and relatively cheap and, and a pretty high quality for a basic paint brand. Here's Golden if you want to use paint in a, in a maybe higher quality, more professional quality brand. This is their uh, Golden makes professional paints. Liquitex as well. You can always pause and rewind, screenshot all this. This is also in... Uh, I, I did a whole course showing how to teach, how to do painting, uh, how to do everything we're doing today. Windsor Newton, Artist Loft, this is Michael's Art Supplies uh, brand. Buzz, Peebo, Holbein, and Dyler Rowney. Okay, so those are the colors that I'm about to use throughout today's uh, painting. So let's get that whole process started here. So the first thing that I normally do is I just put a little bit of color, a little bit of paint onto the surface of the canvas to get it started. 
and I'm going to take a little bit of, of some water. This is really the only time I ever put water on my canvas. You could skip this step if you really wanted, right? Probably the next 10, 10 minutes of what we're about to do here, or maybe less, five minutes. You do not have to do this. I do think it's going to make for better painting. You don't also could use different colors. I was contemplating using maybe a, a cool red or a cool blue in order to maybe give the painting a bit of a colder quality, um, to maybe give a slightly menacing quality to this painting. And then it's like, well, we're talking about someone who is, you know, Satan lives in hell and having a kind of a warm uh, glow to this painting makes some sense, especially because I, I want to do a little bit of fire in the background. Um, but uh, it's up to you how you want to approach this. And I'm just going to get the edges really quickly. I'm just trying to get it kind of even. I don't mind if it's a little bit streaky, but the main thing I, I want to avoid is, is lots of texture on this because that could make the future layers of paint kind of difficult. Okay. So now that I've got this done, usually at this time, one of the things that I like to do is, is take a look at the, if we're painting artwork by an artist, take a look a little bit at that artist's work. Um, or instead to dive a little bit deeper into the, 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 the new story surrounding this. I think probably most people are, are very familiar with all of the news. It's been pretty hard to avoid all of that. Um, so I'm not gonna, you know, uh, I, I think talking about the charities that one can support is probably a better use of time. And we've already kind of done that. And so let's kind of start moving on. I will, I'm gonna blow dry this for just a second to kind of help dry this paint as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna mute the mic.
thank you for letting me know that the volume was muted. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, I've got the paints on the palette here. Let's uh, move that out of the way. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this painting again. Actually, let's just just so it helps me with this process. So the next step I want to do is let's talk about the underpainting because today we have a lot of uh, with a portrait it can be helpful to have a little bit of line work to help you see this, the the facial features and to keep the likeness that we have in the drawing on your canvas. So uh, let's mix a dark color to get us started. Okay, so. We could use black. Black is, is, you can just take black right out of your, your, your paint tube and do this process. But again, I wanna just, as part of a perverse desire to also make this a bit of a learning experience for anyone, I'm gonna take my warm red, I'm gonna mix it with my cool blue. I'm gonna probably be mixing a lot of this color throughout today's episode. So let's just mix all of this up. I think it's really, you know, when I first learned this many, many years ago, to, that you could make your own black with just the basic colors, it kind of blew my mind. So, you know, if if we can learn a little bit of something just through this whole process, that helps. Okay. So it goes from being a kind of a purple, because when we mix red and blue together, we expect to get purple. But if, you know, when we mix those together, they turn into about a brown, which is not surprising. If we mix these two together, our cold red and our warm blue, we're gonna get the, the, the purple that we probably expect to get. Since these are almost exactly the opposite from one another on the color wheel, it's gonna get really, really dark because this, when colors cross through the middle of the color wheel, they go gray. And since these are kind of a little bit closer to here, when we add that yellow to it, it just pulls that color right into the middle. And we'll see, because we're, again, we're gonna be doing this color a few times uh, for today. That's a good little mixture to get us started. Okay, so I'm gonna do this kind of quickly because I'm not, this is a kind of a, a base layer to this painting. Maybe some of these things are gonna be preserved, um, but it's mainly kind of areas that, um, I might be afraid might get covered up with paint and I might not be able to see them later. Like eyes, nostrils, lips, that sort of thing. I have a question for you. I don't know. I do. You, what should the should the tear just be a tear, or should it be the colors of the Ukrainian flag or the Russian flag or or you, and the, I don't know. What what? I, I it was one of these things. I just did this so quickly because I just felt compelled to to want to do something that I don't really have all of the answers here so I thought maybe I just put it out there and see if um, all the great people out there have some better ideas So some of these lines we might paint over later on and we can use a paintbrush to do this or we could use a Posca acrylic paint pen. We could, you could use a Sharpie if you really wanted, but I would so strongly discourage that because a Sharpie is ultimately just gonna just wreck your painting. Sharpies are not meant to last and 
and um, you know you might find just a few weeks from now that all of a sudden the painting starts to look very different than you expected it to be because that especially if you hang this painting anywhere near like uh, sunlight the sun is going to really play havoc on sharpies so but you know sometimes that might be all you have and maybe if you're doing this in a as a watercolor sharpies would probably be better on a watercolor than on an acrylic painting So I'm almost done this process here. Okay. So I think right now, I've got all of that in. What I want to do is, actually, you know what? I might just do a quick little bit down here. And then I probably won't outline this later. And maybe we'll see if we can preserve some of these lines a little bit. I don't know. Don't, I, this is flying, flying by the seat of my pants here. So we'll see if by the end how it all turns out, right? Maybe I'll outline this tier. I'm gonna just, you know what, I'll, I'll do that in a different color, maybe? I don't know, thinking about this. Let's, uh, uh <laughs> comments, you guys are funny. Um, Phase already. So let's let's look at the next step here. So the next step I want to do is I want to start doing the background. So I want to get a little bit of color into the background, and then when the background is done, we'll move back to the foreground, right? And in the background in this case is going to be the flames and the, the dark area around there. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is start, I'm just going to take this color and it's going to put it right here in behind. And I might, I was thinking about leaving a bit of a, a yellow around the, like, a around the figure but I think that's just gonna take take a long a little bit longer so I'm just gonna go right in here and get this in place remember I want to try to do this painting is efficient of a manner as possible.
Don't be afraid to get your fingers a little bit messy when you're painting. Okay. I'm going to take a smaller brush. And I want to try to give the look of some flames. See, I'm stamping some paint around here. That's okay. Let's just get this. I think that's okay. Kind of sloppy, but... Um, also, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to paint his goatee dark right now. So that's that gets us started. Um, let me think. So these flames. I think you know I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit in a, in a subsequent layer here. I'm just gonna quickly clean these brushes off so they don't dry up on me. One of the most interesting things I just read today was an article, I'm trying to remember where it was, uh, about offering $50,000, $100,000 to you Russian troops to uh, defect or abandon their posts, um, which sounds like a lot of money. It's, it's it's a huge sum of money to a Russian soldier who probably makes somewhere around $10,000 a year. So it would be an unheard of sum of money. And uh, which, you know, would certainly cost us here in the West a lot of money. But consider how expensive it is to fight a war trillions of dollars. Literally buying all of those soldiers would I, I I just think you know I'm a pacifist myself and I would love if war did not happen so it's like how do we get ourselves out of this horrible situation um, okay so with this fire I think uh, I you know I, honestly I, I can't remember the last time I painted fire so I'm gonna attempt let's just see because I want this to be in the background what if I take some of my magenta my cool red if I paint a bit of this here in the background
so it's these kind of wispy shapes I'm gonna try to keep myself from getting sucked into doing a ton of detail back here and I think there's only you know there there have been times where we've done these paintings where I spend a, like a couple of hours trying to make the background look super cool uh, and that's important for today's painting no doubt but it's just uh, I want to try to keep So I don't know, maybe I will do more. I don't know, I have no idea how I want to do this. I think I'm gonna just maybe keep it like this for right now and then start painting the face. Keep this train going as quickly as possible. And then we'll see, we'll see. So now that we've got our background, we've got our kind of foundational underpainting done, we've got our background just started, let's now bring some attention to the face, right? So, uh, how should we do this? Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give him some gray hair. So I'm just going to take this color that we mixed previously. Remember, that was warm red cool blue and cool yellow <laughs> there we go and we take some white so I mix those colors together if you mix that and you get maybe a, a bit more of a purple color that means you need a little bit more yellow if you've got a bit more of a greenish color that means you got a lot of yellow and blue we need a little bit more warm red uh, what's if you've got a bit of a brown color that means you got a lot of warm red and cool yellow and you need more cool blue, right? So those together are gonna get this gray. Again, you could just use black paint for this if you want, but I think it's kind of neat to learn that you can actually just make your own black and grays without needing to buy an extra tube of paint. Paint's expensive, it can be certainly. So, I'm going to put this gray here. Because I think one of the insane things about Putin is that he's an old man. There's a lot of I've been people think he might be senile, he might be crazy. He's uh, he's very paranoid about COVID, which is I you know <laughs> um, I guess that's a good thing that he's concerned about it. But you know when you see those videos of him in these meetings on these ridiculously long tables, he's clearly very worried about getting sick. Um, but part of I this tip this war. I think is the product of an old man who's out of touch. He probably because of COVID became very, very isolated and hasn't really been, I you know, very small group of people surrounding him who are all very afraid of him, that he might just, if he doesn't, if they disagree with him, that he'll execute them. So he has all of these absurd ideas, some of which about Ukrainian 
history. I mean, he's said literally, and he's written. So you, he has published articles just last year saying that Ukraine is a fictional country, that Ukrainian people simply do not exist, that me and my heritage is a... F he, he blames this on Vladimir Lenin and says that Lenin created Russia, which is crazy. Ukraine existed before Russia, right? Like, um, I, it's, it's, so I think it's just a, a person sitting around by themselves stewing on all these bizarre theories and thoughts, and, I don't know. Okay, so let's, I'm going to put some gray into his beard here as well. Maybe, I'm going to take, should I use... Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of this. this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take what's called glazing fluid. And I'm going to use some satin glazing fluid or matte glazing fluid. You can get glossy glazing fluid. I like matte glazing fluid because otherwise the painting gets really shiny. And usually my paints end up pretty matte anyway. So I don't want it kind of shiny and matte areas. I'd like for them to all be about the same. So I'm going to take some of this glazing fluid. Glazing fluid is going to make the paint thinner, more transparent, so that I can do, I can paint with it. And let's just see. I, uh, So I'm just painting these wisps in here, and I think the, we'll get more complex as we go. Maybe I'll paint a bit of this into his eyebrows as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I, I don't particularly like how that looks at the moment, but we'll see if we can make it work. As Tim Gunn likes to say. Okay. So, let's look at the original and uh, what I want to do is we're going to paint this red and we're going to paint it a warm red and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my warm red. Now there's a little bit of blue in there. That's okay. So it's okay if the paint gets a little bit dirty. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Oops, sorry. I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix this into this color. Because if I paint this warm red directly on that yellow, it's going to be probably a little bit too dark, and I won't see any of my lines because there's if the white is going to or sorry if I paint the warm red directly on this it's going to it's going to go kind of a brown color because we're going to have warm red and yellow and even though that's going to kind of one might think those t together are going to make an orange usually the more you layer colors the darker they get so uh, I want to try, try to preserve a little bit of this and also that's going to allow me to do some just pure red on its own to give uh, certain areas a little bit more of a pop. I'm also going to take some of this glazing fluid and mix this into my paint. In fact, I'm going to put a bit more in there. So, let's see how well this turns out going to paint over the whole thing. A teardrop. Let's just paint over that, it just makes it easier. Like if I did this just on its own, like if I took this color, my um, 
warm red with a little bit of white and painted directly over top of this, my uh, my lines might have disappeared. Or not disappeared entirely, but certainly much less than they are right now. So this is again a way of preserving some of those details. I'm gonna do his suit like this. The other thing I was wondering is like the, his tie. Should his tie be? Um, should it be the Russian flag or I don't know. Just right before I move on, I just want to make sure that this... I just want to try to get this as even as possible. And you got to go kind of quickly, because even right now, I'm starting to kind of remove paint as it dries. So I might... that might just be... I just have to stop here. That's even enough. Okay. So, maybe I'm going to, should I paint this white? I, maybe... Maybe I'll paint that, his, his collar of his shirt white. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to take this white, and I'm also going to put a little bit of glazing fluid in here. You could, if you don't have glazing fluid, you could use matte medium. It won't work quite as well. But it, it is a suitable alternative. As well, if you do not have that, another thing that you could use as maybe a last resort would be Mod Podge. That could also work. And I guess you could try using uh, water, but I, I try to discourage people from painting with water because it... Uh, actually, let's just paint right over all of this. Water, um, you know, we use water to clean our brushes, and it just breaks down the paint, and so it's sort of the least um, preferred method for making a color more transparent. Let's, I'm going to, for the tie, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take some of this white and my um, warm blue. Yeah, let's do warm blue. I'm going to put a little bit of white in there. That way it's going to help this color stand out against this uh, yellow background. And I, I did not put any um, uh, glazing fluid or medium into this. because I want that to be fairly opaque. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> There's ridiculous things in the chat there that makes me very happy to see people having an opportunity to vent a little bit. Um, so that's that makes that's pretty cool. Uh, okay. So let's. Let's move on here to finishing the background. So we can paint a little bit more of our dark colors into the up here and then into the, the flames. Is there anything that I want to do with the flames? Let me, let's take a look at this. You know, I just took a, some clip art of flames and threw them into the background here. So, I think, uh, so I was just sort of looking at this, these sort of darker areas of black and uh, red make me think about doing something very similar in this area. So let's take some of this cool red and put it to the side here. Let's take some of our darker color, mix that together. So this is cool red and then my the black. Again, you could use black if you wanted. Uh, and then I'm going to take some glazing fluid. Let's just get as much of that off. Mix that together. And then... Oops. So now I've got this sort of tr dark, transparent color. It's a little bit purpley. Hmm. I just stamped all that paint off. For my hand, Ugh, okay, one second here. I just, my hand got on this blue. So let's paint that one. So that can dry while I'm working here. Hmm. I think I'm going to take make this a little bit darker. And again, a little bit more glazing fluid in here. fiddling with things and it's sort of p taking some of the paint off.
So I gotta, it's gonna take a little bit more work on there. So let's just kind of continue. So I'm just trying to like overlap the flames with some kind of, because flames are transparent and so they're going to, there's going to be the background coming into, into play here and It's okay. I think Let me just, I'm going to move on from that for a little bit and come back up to the rest of the head area. And just darken in all of this. Again, this is just my dark. Uh, color. We could use a black if we wanted. I think this is going to be su more than sufficient. This feels so much more positive for me. I, there's a lot of other things I should be doing with my time today, but um, I found it very difficult to get anything done. I cannot stop just refreshing the news. And f for the past couple of years, I've read very little news. You know, my therapist <laughs> suggested potentially, you know, taking a news break because I was just becoming consumed by it and it made a huge difference and it's not like it's pretty hard to like not pay some attention to what's going on um, but uh, really every, every bit of free moment I've had over the past 
few weeks has been consumed by this person and their ridiculous um, actions. And this to me just... It's, now that I'm doing it, it makes me just feel so much better. I just feel like... Oh, I'm channeling my my anger towards making something, doing something about it. Okay. So let's, uh, I'm going to blow dry this. I'm going to do a little bit more here in the flames, and I think I'm just going to leave it. It's not exactly my, my best work ever, but I think the I, what's most important is the idea coming across, not the, the way that it's painted, as far as I'm concerned anyway. So let's blow dry. Okay, so... Let's get some of this paint off. I'm gonna take some of my glazing fluid, I'm gonna put this right in here. And my paint that I've just been using bit more transparent. Still pretty transparent, let's, or still opaque. Let's get a little bit more.
Yeah, it's gets, gets getting better. Maybe? <laughs> uh, don't speak too soon, Michael. I don't need them all to be the same level of opaqueness. Maybe... Maybe that's okay. Okay, maybe I'll do... That. And then... Just try to blend that up. Yeah, not bad. I'm a little... You can see where I, I wiped some of this paint away, and so it kind of it literally rubbed back down to the surface. So let's go down here. You know, on it, like before this episode began, I was having some tech issues, and it did cross my mind a little bit. Like, hmm, that's really interesting. I'm having some tech issues I haven't had before. Moments before going on the air. Is that just an incredible coincidence? I think it is an incredible coincidence, but it. It does also, you know, just make me very aware that, you know, I, I consider we're, we're in, at, at the very least, another Cold War. I also think it's entirely possible that we're, World War III has begun. And I don't mean to alarm, I, I do mean to alarm people, um, uh, because this is going to get worse before it gets better, so... It's scary times we're living in right now. Okay. Maybe just... I, I think that's turned out pretty good. It's kind of... It's very graphic in that it's very... It's less naturalistic and realistic. But I think, especially considering how fast I want to get this painting done, but sort of one of the things, concessions that we have to make as artists sometimes is like, we just can't do it all exactly the way we want. We sometimes have to kind of make a few little sacrifices. I'm going to blow dry this. I've made a little boo-boo here. So I think I might introduce a little bit of orange, just like I've done with some of these, the black, maybe over top of it. Let's just see. So...
how about let's take some I need a little bit more warm red that doesn't have white in it let's take some warm yellow and a little bit of warm red to make an orange I think that's pretty good. It, this is a much more like what yellow dominant orange. I was going to put another one of these. Where would it go? A lot of wet paint still on here. I like that. I like this little bit of variety here. This kind of reminds me of a little bit the style of uh, William Blake. He did lots of flames and in his paintings. He's definitely on the list of people that I want to look at in our master study class. I think I'm about 30 seconds away here from moving on to the back to the foreground. I just want to come back to this area here. Perfect, but perfection's the enemy of art, so we need to learn how to embrace the faults of our paintings and our own faults as humans. Yeah, that's, uh, I, don't feel, I feel much better about that. Okay. So, <laughs> that's pretty satisfying. That's, I haven't, uh, it's nice to be able to, to laugh a little bit. I mean, this has been a very stressful 
time in I think a lot of our lives, so it feels kind of nice. So, let's look at the foreground. So now we're going to finish the face and, and ultimately finish the painting. So what do we need to do next here? There's so many comments in there. I, I'm sorry, I don't have a chance to to read so many of them. Here, I'm just taking a quick look. Um, I do like Lolly says. I'm pleased you're doing these streams, Michael. It's a great way to bring attention to the cause, to highlight charities, and give us all a place to vent and discuss. As bottling up isn't healthy. Awesome. That makes me feel good. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Again, making art, talking, writing, going for a jog, exercising, playing basketball, tennis, hockey, all of those things are really healthy. It, it, it gives us a moment to slow down, uh, to maybe reflect a little bit. You know, when we're all anxious, it, it's very, it's impossible to think clearly, right? So. You know, I'm a big believer in meditation. I'm a big believer in therapy. I have a counselor that I talk to. I'm talking with her again on Wednesday. I, uh, I, I believe in medication. I take a medication for anxiety. I take a medication called Ciprolex, and it's changed my life. I was one of those persons who thought medication is the, is the devil until I got in a really bad car accident, or I was hit by a car while riding my bicycle and was it uh, was very scared my thoughts were were not my own or weren't healthy thoughts and immediately some bells went off and like we got to take care of some of this stuff because i don't like some of that those dark th thoughts um so the, you know i think this type of thing i think if if we had world leaders who were able to take a bit of a breath and before they do something as horrendous as invading uh, an innocent country next door out of the blue, I think we'd be, the world would be in a better place. Okay. So, let me see it. I kind of took a little bit of a, I want to do this again. <laughs> um... How do I want to approach the rest of the face? We could do a lot of detail in here and really get, you know, make this face look very realistic, quote unquote. But again, I'd like to be done here within the next 40 minutes, completely wrapped up. So what I'm going to do probably is just some thin glazes of darker colors and highlights and then we'll wrap it up so i think a first few things that i want to do i want to kind of fix the horns a little bit so i wonder if i can use this color i had down here this is um my warm red with a little bit of white i'm going to take a bit more white in here i want to make that a little bit more opaque so that it uh, covers up some of the paint that I had smudged back there. Oops. Hmm. Mm, that horn's getting longer as I go here. <laughs> I might go back and 
add a little bit of uh, black to shape that horn after I'm done, ultimately. And that would be, you know, it's part of your finishing touches. Sometimes you got to, you, you want to just be completely done, but you got to kind of go back and touch up the background occasionally. that needs a little bit of a lightening up because I made a boo-boo. That's because I was my hand got paint on it and stamping around the painting. So... those little areas up which kind of fall in a little bit in line with with the face actually some of the the highlights but okay so that's that's I think good for right now I'm gonna I want to blow dry this because I got some wet paint on here so I don't want to get continue stamping things Cool. <laughs> this is uh, uh, ridiculous. Uh, that's I, that makes me very happy. I, I love laughing at my own paintings. Uh, I love that experience of looking at something that I've done or that I'm working on and being like, this is weird. This is strange. I did not expect to be doing this, right? And that's one of the things I love most about making art is is surprising myself right and um, it uh, I find that very very pleasing so just oops did I okay good sometimes I forget to unmute the microphone I already did, did that once today I was on a bit of a good track record for a while of, of remembering to unmute the microphone but not always not always okay so I think one thing I might do right now is just take my warm red right out of the tube. I'm gonna paint this on a few places like the jacket. To start with. And So 
now that jacket becomes much more of a solid red. I am tempted to do the same thing over the entire face, but you know, one of the things that you know we've been doing when we paint, uh, let's say, a, a, well, a portrait particularly, is we have sort of our our uh, local color, and then we kind of go darker and lighter from that. So I might reserve. Well, in fact, let's just take a look at at these side by side, just. What I might do with this is actually use this as my first dark layer. So I've, cause I've got my yellow shining through in here, but I kinda, I think I want that to be just now the little bit lighter side, lighter value, right? So if we think of a, a value scale from let's say one to 10, one being our highlight like white and 10 being black, right? We've got all these different values in between. And we could do a value scale, it's got a million steps, but let's just say like a paint swatch at Home Depot, got white, black, and then all the values in between. So this red that I've got here, which is on top of a warm yellow, I think I want that to be sort of like four, right? So it's a little bit closer to a highlight. And then what I'm about to do here is gonna be maybe like five and six going towards my darker values. So I'm gonna put this like I'm just everything that's that's going to be darker. I want to look for like big shapes. Now this is probably not gonna be very visible on camera, which is a bit of a shame. But um, I'm also gonna paint over this uh, red that I did on the horns. Cause remember that was it was a bit pinkish because I put a little bit of white in there to cover up some of the, my sloppy painting. So in this instance, I'm, it's just gonna go all red. And I could be also pretty, I can be a little bit, you know, lazy about painting it here because if it goes over that black background, it's not gonna stand out as much as the, the red with white, the pinkish color will, right? Ah, as I just smudge paint all over. <laughs> Uh, okay. So the interior of these eyes, that's going to be all darker color. That's going to be all darker there. This area, I have to think about how I want to do that hair on his head. Maybe I should do that after this. use a little bit of a brush just to maybe soften some of these edges out just a little bit. good like I already start seeing kind of like 
bit more dimension in this face. And obviously, um, I, I kind of getting some of the lines start to kind of disappear a little bit. I mean, I'm still pretty obviously. It's I can see a lot of it, but you know, maybe some people at I, at home are having a little bit harder time seeing those. I don't know. Okay. Um. I'm happy with with this here. I think this just looks a little bit almost like if you have an area where it's a little bit patchy, this brush is kind of now a dry brush, right? So I can kind of just loosely go in if there's something that I'm like, yeah, it still looks kind of. I want it to be a highlight, but I don't. It's maybe a bit of yellow coming through. I just kind of take care of that, just like that. Cool. Now, let's darken, actually let's blow dry this because we've got all this wet paint. Um, it's some. It's fun to paint wet on wet, but I think just for our, because we're in a little bit of a hurry, I want to try to just, I'll use a bit of glazing to, to, to the next step here. just while I'm right here I'm just gonna take my warm blue and paint this on his necktie give more volume to that later I'll just let that dry one of the things I try to do when I'm painting is is work in almost like opposite areas of the painting so while one area is wet I'm working on this area that can start drying this is wet I can come back and forth and it's sort of especially if I'm working quickly it's helpful obviously I use the blow dryer if I'm if I need to go even faster but uh, it's just something I've been doing for decades now. So the hair. What's the quickest way we could do that hair? Let's take make a brown and 
we'll do a little bit thin glaze of that. So let's take our warm yellow, warm red. We've got an orange. Let's take some warm blue. Mix that together and we'll get a brown. If you want it to be a darker brown, what well, we can add a little bit of blue and maybe we'll do a little bit of that. I'm going to put just a bit of glazing fluid in here just to make it a little bit thinner because I want to preserve the, the gray. So even though it's brown, I want to have a bit of gray in here. I'm going to take a small brush. is dry okay and I'm gonna also you know just I can refer to my own drawing of just sort of how I did these and I might just sort of paint over a few of these lines just sort of similar to that so in fact I'm going to let's look at this It just helps me sort of see almost like the flames that I just painted below. Some that are maybe a little bit longer and some that are shorter. As I come down on the side here, we want just shorter ones because the hair is going to be a bit shorter. Got some little buddies on my toothbrush here. My toothbrush. <laughs> oh, my paintbrush. Ay, ay, ay. Makes it a little tricky. I think those are Putin's henchmen there getting on my. In my paint. Okay. So, I mean, let's just take a look at how that turned out. And. Okay. Happy with that. I'm going to. 
Let's make just a little bit of a darker brown. Take a little bit more of my warm blue and warm red. Get just a little bit of a different brown. Maybe I'll put a bit of, a little bit of glazing fluid in here. Oh. I wanted to do a bit of that in his eyebrows, so actually I'm just gonna take the color that I had before here. Probably gonna put some white back on top of there. Uh, um, you know what? I'm gonna blow dry that because it'll be out. So my, my real good old friend Meredith MJ there. Uh, we used to be roommates when we went to art college together in Los Angeles. And now she's super, super successful in the animation industry. Um, awesome to see you. Cool. I'm glad that you're, you're here. <laughs> nice to have friends pop in for a little visit so I'm just gonna do a little bit of I don't want to do too much of of this darker color it's it's not that much darker but it's just gonna help give a little bit more dimension to this guy's here. This reminds me of some paintings that I used to do. These kind of brush strokes. I was kind of thinking it would be a little bit darker than this. Probably a bit of this is the the the, the glazing fluid I put down has made this just color just more transparent. So it's not quite as dark as maybe I hoped it would be, but maybe that's maybe I, I don't need it to go too much darker. Sometimes paint just sort of uh, does for us what we want it to do, but we don't really know that that's what we want it to do. I keep uh, neglecting his evil goatee down here, which I very quickly did earlier. So now let's sort of shape this up a little bit. Yikes. Let's just leave that. Uh, actually, let's you know. Just as a reminder, there's links in the description below to some uh, great charities that I encourage you to donate to if you have the means. There's 
maybe we'll, in fact let's let's take a little bit of a break here shortly because I know not everyone has been watching since the beginning and uh, one of the reasons why I'm here is I want to help uh, raise some money to support all the people that have been impacted by Putin's war So now I'm going to just put a little bit of some of these stray hairs coming out here. Don't want to do too many. Too long. It's been too long. <laughs> okay, so that's that's a good little start there. Maybe I want to do the opposite back. Actually, now let's just look at at this up here. I don't mind his hair like that. I kind of like it like that. I might I might just leave that like that. I could see almost taking my darkest color and doing one or two little pieces in there. I think I want to, I need to do the eyebrows with a bit more of a white and a lighter brown in here. And then I'm just going to leave that hair as it is. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do take some white black. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of those charities here in just a minute. I just want to, I need to blow dry this here. So I just mixed a, a gray, just the white and my dark color. He's got pretty small eyebrows, and now they're getting pretty big, but uh, we can always, you know, reduce. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to do quickly... Clean up some of the stuff down here. <sighs> I'm always stamping paint around. Always just gotta be careful of that. You know, if you want to have some fun, you could have some of this hair coming out of his ears and noses and noses out of his nose.
So if if these are too bright, I can always glaze and and reduce the intensity, the brightness of those colors later on. But uh, I think that's okay for right now. Uh, I just want to. So here's the collar. Maybe it's. I'm going to start doing a little bit of highlighting. This is just pure white. So I'm also just doing a little cleanup job too while I'm here. Okay, so maybe let's just take a second here, just a, a quick um, reminder of some of the places that people could donate some money to. I, I see in the chat there, Paulo was just saying, um, I've donated money through my church last Saturday. That's all I can do for now. We still have to deal with the car accident that you had a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Um, just if you have if you have extra money, um, I. Um, I would appreciate, in lieu of donating any money to me today, that you consider some of these charities. Again, UNICEF, great documentary, or document, great organization that's done fantastic things for decades and decades. I remember as a kid raising money for UNICEF. Uh, the Canada Ukraine Foundation already raised a million and some. Uh, Ukraine, Canada Ukraine Foundation helps uh, people. Uh, find shelter, food, medicine, uh, the UN humanitarian uh, uh, organization, the um, refugee organization here, strongly encourage you to do that because people are desperately trying to escape Ukraine to Poland and other neighboring countries. Uh, Doctors Without Borders, there's a lot of people who are injured and sick. I mean, there's hospitals full of people, just like they're here in Canada and England, Australia, where people were sick to begin with. Tons of little children who have been caught in this vicious uh, war. The Red Cross, again, all these organizations you can donate money to and you can get a charitable receipt as well from. And if you donate to the Canadian or American or British Red Cross, then they'll give the money to the Ukrainian Red Cross who are there on the ground. So, let's uh, let's get back to the painting. I wanted to sort of get, uh, let's do some, some of the, the darkest areas on the painting now. Let's look at them side by side. So I wanna now take my dark red Actually, I'm just going to clean a couple of brushes here for a second. So I'm going to take my warm red and I need to make a more of my darkest color again. And I'm probably just going to do this. Right there, I need 
some cool blue. So let's mix these up together. We're going to make our black again. All right, so now we have a very, very deep purple. Not the band, the color. Deep purple. Uh, and now I'm putting some cool yellow into it. And that's going to pull that purple into the center, into the neutral core, and give us a nice dark, dark color that we can use to modify the rest of these paints and do glazes, etc. Because taking a little bit longer than I was hoping to, but the painting is turning out pretty well, so I'm not I'm not unhappy. Just want to keep uh, keep the train running here. So now that I got my dark color again, let's um, we'll, we'll mix this. We'll make it a pretty dark red, not super dark. Obviously, we can still go many, many steps to get down there. But uh, I always like working from larger shapes down to smaller shapes. Remember, we did some of this warm red in some of the you know again I use that the one being our white. 10 being black, and then we have the, the scale in between, the value scale. So now we can, and the, this blue here was about 5 and 6, now we need to get to like 7, 8, 9, right? So this is going to be like our 7 on the value scale. And I'm, just, I'm not going to clean the brush off, just wipe off that excess paint. Let's get our glazing fluid on here. Okay, and let's bring up these two side by side. I've got a brush. That one's kind of crusty. It's been sitting on the table. So let's get another fresh one that I can use for any blending that I might want to do. So I would probably start in my darkest areas and work right to left if I can. So we got some pretty dark areas under here. Not sure how well this is coming across on the can. On all this red is pretty tricky for the camera to try and absorb, but. So after a while, that blending brush, and we can use a brush maybe more specifically tailored for this, a mop brush, but um, I'm just going to use the most accessible tools that, uh, that I think even a beginner might have just laying around their studio. Looking for these big shapes of shadow. I 
I'm debating in my, in my mind what to do with those eyes. Do I make them lighter, or should it just be dark and empty <laughs> inside? I don't know. I like this big, ugly, pouty lip he's got here. Makes me very satisfied. Okay. Um, maybe I'll even just take this color and quickly go somewhere down in here. Where should we put this? Maybe just a bit at the bottom. Very subtle. take the same color and put this on his collar a little bit. Because we would expect to see some reflection from his... Hmm, it's not blending very well. That white must have been a bit wet here, eh? Hmm. Hmm. I don't like that at all. So where's my rag? Let's just wipe that off. We'll just do that differently. All right. Just take it right away. So, what's next here? So I need to blow dry this so that I can do another layer of dark, even darker glaze. And then we're gonna do a, a lighter glaze. We'll do a little bit of um, maybe darker 
glaze on the maybe on eyebrows, hair, collar, and then we'll be I think we'll be close to being done. Okay, what am I doing for time? Okay, I wanted to start the other painting at two o'clock, so it's I'm in my uh, let's let's uh, buckle down, Michael. Let's get this out of uh, the studio and into the world. Where's my other brush? So let's just double down with our our darker color. Mix this in here and get even darker. Let's take some of that glazing fluid. Normally I would probably do uh, maybe two more steps in between here, but let's just uh, take this and run.
So those eyes kind of look pretty dark, which is, you know, maybe cons that's a, depending on how you think about it, a good or bad thing. I'm not sure. Maybe they need to be yellow. What does what the devil look like? little bit of a highlight on that side. Again, um, let's take this dark color. blow dry this I want to go back in here
Okay, let's try this again. <sighs> I must have had some... I'm probably using glazing food. There might not be glazing food in this. That's why it's... Okay, let's try that one more time. I have to blow dry it again because of, of that. darken a few other places. That's a really dark line now. Which I'm not super happy with. Because it kind of means I've got to do a bit more darkening elsewhere to bring the rest of the face in line with it. Um, but That's almost too much. Let's see if I can take my to clean that off to get there. We pulled up a little bit of red too. Right again.
Okay, let's try this for the third time. That's better. I'll have to let that dry before I do any more tinkering there. Let's just... Uh, So with these eyes, I'm gonna take a bit of, let's see if I do a little bit of warm yellow and white. We'll darken that those down anyway, just a little bit. I'm gonna do the teardrop next here. Take some white and warm blue. Put a bit of glazing fluid to give it a little bit of transparency.
while that's drying, let's do some just pure black, uh, darker glaze. Let's take this dark uh, glaze here, or, or our dark color, and put some glazing fluid. And then we get a nice dark, dark color. It's a little on the purpley side, so let's add a bit of yellow in here. That's better. And I gotta blow dry all of that so I don't smudge anything. Let's take this darker glaze and put it on the collar of the shirt here. happen. Uh, take this darker glaze. I'm going to take it, put it in the hair up here. So on this side, just darken that whole side down of hair and eyebrows. Just darken those eyebrows too. Uh, let's go T. this side closest to the forehead because if we have the light kind of coming in from to the side and maybe even a little bit behind it's going to cast a bit of a shadow there you can even take this color and just kind of slightly darken that yellow we put in for the eyes, specifically in the corner. Okay. 
Okay, let's blow dry this and we'll do that just a little bit more. That's much darker. It's just There's just sometimes parts of a painting that just refuse to cooperate. So basically what I'm doing, just glazing with my, my darkest color, even over top of, of some of these skin tones, because I just want to get to push my contrasts as far as possible. Okay, let's do some quick highlights. Ugh, I know I'm way over time that I want it to be, but. Um,
little bits of highlights. Okay, uh, that was okay. I'm just, I think what I wanna do now is just take my darkest color and do some little outlining and then we'll be done here. So, Okay, so we're gonna wrap up here in about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna shut down and get ready for the next painting. So I just wanna do a little bit of final outlining here on this painting so that uh, um, just sort of bring some of the darker colors back into focus or the, or the darkest values back into, into focus here. So let's probably mostly just things like around the eyes in fact these are kind of wet but I'll just see if I can avoid making a mess of things I could also use like a, a, a Posca pen to try to do some of this Should have blow dried this first.
Um, I need to shape this nose just a little bit here. So I'm going to take my glazing fluid, this darker color. Actually, I'm going to put a bit of fresh glazing fluid in there. I gotta blow dry this. This is. get this dark color I want to also, I think, darken his beard quite a lot here. Let's blow dry that. I'm going to do one, darken that one more time, and then we'll be done.
I think I'm going to darken his hair a little bit here. Okay. So, let's, uh, oh, the teardrop, darn it, I forgot the teardrop, darn it. Okay, uh, let's get some more blue. <laughs> Meredith says, I assume you're gonna sell these as a diptych. Um, I don't know, I wasn't planning on selling them, maybe Maybe we could do an auction or something. Um, but actually, I'm gonna go for a cool blue, just to keep a bit of a make a tiny different difference between the. the tie thick application. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, let's... 
let's call this a day. So, let's take a second to Hmm, my mouse is not working. Putin trying to hack my my mouse on my computer here. <laughs> so anyway, usually what I like to do here is just kind of do my um, side by side comparison. I uh, you know I'm not. There's aspects of this that I'm happier with more than others. Uh, I would probably focus a little bit more on the nose here. I don't know if the the gray hair was the best idea because we don't really see him with such gray hair um, so maybe I would kind of darken that down with more brown than I than I have here mm, same thing this could even just go almost pure black really but I mean ultimately I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out so um, yeah I think that's uh, let's. I can't. Can I zoom in? I can't zoom in or anything. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it's. I, I got to move on because in another. I'm just gonna take a break, clean my pal the table up, and then we're gonna come back. And we're gonna talk about somebody who is much more deserving of recognition. Uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky, who I think is an absolute hero and the the complete opposite of this trash despot so thank you everyone for joining me please strongly consider if you have the means to leave a donation there's the links in the description below um, and hopefully if you're watching this episode a year from now five years from now you'll be like wow that was what a weird point in history thank goodness that came and went and everything's back to normal I have some doubts about that, but if you're watching this five years from now, please leave a comment below, assuming the world still exists and Putin hasn't blown us all up. <laughs> Tell us what, what the future looks like. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys in just a few short minutes. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and if you're somewhere safe, take a moment to just think about how grateful you are to live somewhere free where you can watch a video like this. I'll talk to you soon, everyone. Thank you again.